today we have two wonderful guests with us and to my right is Ed Davis and he is actually as Mr. Crenshaw puts it, it he is his chief of staff <laughs> and he's actually his personal historian which I'm sure we all wish we had someone like that to, to help tell our story and um, Mr. Davis is a professor of history at Pulaski Technical College I think he has some of his students in the room as well and Mr. Davis is going to to introduce Mr. Crenshaw to us, and they're going to together give us the presentation today. So we'd like to welcome them both to Legacies and Lunch. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay. First, we're all going to engage in uh, the slideshow. Okay, so uh, without further ado, we'll get the slideshow going. Get the lights. Okay, this picture right here is Milton Crenshaw at age 45, okay, arriving at Fort Stewart, Georgia in 1964. This picture is the picture of one of the first, if not the first group of primary flight instructors. In other words, these men trained the teacher pilots between 1941 and 1946 at Tuskegee. This picture was from 1942. Mr. Crenshaw is at the top row, second man from the left. The tallest. <laughs> one of the tallest, exactly. <laughs> Pictured at the top right is Charles Chief Anderson. At the top left is Milton Crenshaw holding a newspaper. And to his left in that picture, of course, a, a fellow by the name of Benjamin. Again, the airmen are featuring Charles Chief Anderson, some cadets, and Milton Crenshaw near a PT-17. And Chief Anderson, of course, then with First Lady uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. And that was taken in March of 1941. And she actually insisted uh, that she see these men fly, and uh, the rest is uh, history. This is one of dozens of speaking engagements led by Mr. Crenshaw. Of course, he loves to travel. Milton Crenshaw was the mastermind behind the idea of starting a flight program at Philander Smith College from 19, between 1947 and 1952. This building was located near Adams Field in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it was funded by the Holbert family and their central flying service. There were terminal courses uh, were offered there at this building for the price of $330. Any persons were admitted, especially non-veterans. Pictured here is Earl V. Stalkups, who was a student of Milton Crenshaw's at Philander Smith College's Aviation School. Mr. Stalkups is shown here on the right. He lives currently right now in Little Rock, Arkansas. Incidentally, Mr. Crenshaw and I attended Earl's wedding last year. <laughs> This is another picture of uh, a Little Rock legend, of course, uh, Jimmy Washington, who was an assistant to Mr. Crenshaw in 1948. Of course, there's another unknown student posing near the wing of the plane. All three will pose for a would-be classic Philander Smith College aviation scene. Can anybody spot out Mr. Crenshaw? <laughs> you guessed it, he's the second man from your left, of course, or the one with the bright colored slacks on. And guess what, he's not sagging, his pants are not sagging. <laughs> Here stands only 21 of the instructor pilots of this greatest generation. Their mission were clear, was clear, to train the best and, of course, to make them even better. They had a very high washout rate. Mr. Crenshaw is the first man to the right of this slide. Of course, he's uh, 
picture right there in the corner, the top row all the way to your right hand side. That's his signature, signature there, Mr. Milton Crenshaw. This is Philander Smith College's aviation instructor, Jimmy Washington, again, of course, an inspiring student, Earl Stalkups. This is a familiar scene for us historians. This is basically uh, the war bonds thing, and they have an African-American uh, hero, a figure here. War is a business and we can't afford to lose our vested interests. This was a classic uh, airman flyer example. The Department of the Army Certificate of Service presented to Milton Pitts Crenshaw in recognition of 30 years of federal service. Of course, in actuality, it's really over 40 years of federal service. Uh, Mr. Crenshaw was actually in the Army Air Corps prior to the Air Force, and that was long before 1947. The Aviation Hall of Famer Milton Crenshaw received a letter of recognition from then President William Jefferson Clinton back in 1998. This was his letter honored by Governor Mike Beebe back in March of 2007. Mr. Crenshaw was the recipient of an appreciation award for his job service and legacy by the Governor of Arkansas at the State Capitol Building. Of course, this is Governor Mike Beebe pictured there with the familiar face to my right, right here. He looks kind of sleepy in that picture, but I can assure you he wasn't sleeping, okay? Of course, we all know these characters here. President George Bush and Madam Speaker Nancy Pelosi are amongst the middle in this area here of sea of young men who, uh, of course, changed the war effort. This is a shot of the Capitol Rotunda of the U.S. Congress building. Here is a great picture of the majority of the living Tuskegee Airmen members, of course, and support staff that were also present. And this is the last picture of the slideshow before we begin our introduction of Bill Crenshaw. A pioneer, pilot, social activist, orator, integrationist, proud father, and a man of God, Milton Crenshaw is a native of Little Rock, Arkansas, and a product of its public school systems. Milton Crenshaw is a graduate of Dunbar High School and a graduate of Dunbar Junior College with an associate's degree of teaching. Soon after that, he enrolled in the world famous Tuskegee Institute, majoring in mechanical engineering in 1939. By 1941, Milton Crenshaw became a professional aviator and an experienced pilot. From 1941 to 1972, Mr. Crenshaw strengthened his profession at various locations in the South, including Fort Seal in Oklahoma, Fort Rucker in Alabama, and Fort Stewart in Georgia, and Moulton Airfield near Tuskegee, Alabama. During the latter years of his military matriculation, from the late 1970s to the early 1980s, Milton Crenshaw worked as an equal opportunity officer. In retrospect, by December of 1942, Milton Crenshaw held the title of primary flight instructor. With this title, he would graduate hundreds of U.S. cadets that would eventually serve in combat missions during World War II, the Korean conflict, and the Vietnam escalation. All these men would serve as Tuskegee Airmen pilots. Milton Crenshaw was the first Arkansan to arrive at the famed Tuskegee Institute and only one of eight total men who were originally listed from Arkansas that we have on record. Mr. Crenshaw has the dubious distinction of being the first man of color from Arkansas with a civilian license through the Civilian Pilot Training Program. <laughs> 